Welcome back to World of Warship Splits with Terry. Today we are looking at this. And this is a German battleship. This is the Friedrich der Große, Frederick the Great, also affectionately known as the Freddy. This is the Tier 9 German battleship. In in opposition to the Tier 8 German battleship, the Bismarck, which actually existed, this ship was never made. So what happened was that uh, after the First World War, Germany wasn't allowed to have much in terms of a navy, which they were planning to change, because eventually they were planning to challenge the, the British Navy for supremacy at the seas. And for that they had a very ambitious shipbuilding program, which was revolving around, I think, 10 battleships and 4 or 6 aircraft carriers. That whole thing kind of was planned in 1938 and was supposed to happen for 10 years because they were expecting war not to break out for another 10 years, until 1948, by which time they would have had all the fleet and everything ready to challenge the British. Well, war did happen, so they stopped it all again. But basically, what the, uh, the Friedrich here is, is the H-39 designated plan, which was kind of the first iteration of the new battleships that were supposed to be built. She's an enlarged Bismarck. So what they did was they needed bigger guns because uh, the Japanese uh, didn't, uh, didn't, uh, didn't sign or didn't adhere to the naval treaty. So the escalation clause came into being, so everybody stopped using 380 mils and went over to 406 mils. And this is what this thing has. And again, she was never built. And the H-39 was not also actually having an official name besides H-39. There were a couple of proposals. I haven't read anything about anybody actually proposing to call it Friedrich der Große. But hey, it's a good name, is any, really. So, what do we got here? We have... 57,000 hit points, we've got a very good citadel protection, we've got a decent damage reduction, not so great in terms of fire and flooding, and in term, just okay in terms of torpedo damage reduction. So, as is traditional for German battleships, these things were meant as close-range fighters. And that is actually historically accurate. German battleships were, were built with close-range combat in mind. They had... Uh, armor armor layout just in order to uh, just to, su to su support that kind of thing. They didn't have the most sturdy horizontal armor protection. No, they didn't have the best torpedo protection either. But they were meant to challenge the British or actually in the beginning the French, because everybody thought, hey, when Germany starts fighting, the French will be involved very quickly. So the French navy, with their relatively new battleships, was the primary target at the at the early stages of the plan. She is still quite quick with 27 knots. It takes her an enormous amount of time to actually get there though. Although that has been buffed recently, it used to be even worse. It still takes her a while. <coughs> her turn circle isn't that great either with uh, 16 seconds. So she's a bit of a lumbering giant. And yes, the ship is relatively big. Uh, the guns, they are the same layout as on the Bismarck and they just well, which again is historically accurate, they just figured, hey, we can fit some uh, some bigger rifles onto these things and uh, upped it from 380 to 406 millimeters. She still has the same 19 second reload time, but she does almost 2000 alpha damage on the armor piercing. These are brutal guns for the 406 millimeters. Also 14 kilometers, good range, and of course this being a German battleship, she has excellent secondaries. Basically, she gets the same secondaries as the Bismarck had. She gets six twin turrets of 150mm uh, secondary guns, range of uh, over seven kilometers, <coughs> excuse me, and uh, a seven second reload with my setup. She also gets uh, eight twin turrets of 105mm guns. These were, I think, historically meant as anti aircraft guns, but they used here as actual working secondaries with a 5.4 kilometer range, which is quite good, and they're automatic, so they shoot by themselves. The AA isn't bad, it isn't superior, so if you're in this ship and you're facing tier 9 or 10 carriers alone, you're in trouble. 
because they can dish out a large amount of punishment. You don't have the best torpedo protection. And the AA isn't sufficient uh, for her to, to stand alone against um, against concentrated uh, concentrated air attacks. But it's, um, it's not bad either. And of course, the concealment means, given how big this ship is, you'll be seen from... You'll be outspotted by most things in the game. So you'll be seen very quickly. Again, this is a German battleship. I play my German battleships very aggressively because they do shine, while they have very good uh, long, very good main guns, they do shine at close range. So uh, I usually build them into a full secondary build, which starts here with the secondary gun specialization skill, or elite bonus rather, which reduces the reload time. Now, the, the armor belt <coughs> the armor belt per improvement would have been nice to get better citadel protection and better damage reduction. But in this case, I am going with offensive power rather than staying power here. Because that gets us over to the equipment. And that frees me up for, because I have the reload on the secondary, so I don't need to go with a secondary reload module. Uh, brings us to the secondary mod 2 which increases the firing range and decreases the shell dispersion. This is noticeable, in my opinion, against the Bismarck. They have an extremely tight dispersion, especially the 150mm secondaries, but also the auto ones. Um, the, the Bismarck's ones were had, had a tendency to be a bit all over the place. These seem to be much, much tighter in their, in their dispersion. So, she does need that, because well, you, you can, you really have a hard time dodging torpedoes in this thing. You basically, your best bet basically is to maintain your speed, keep the distance up, and um, at the same time use the secondaries to, to dissuade destroyers from coming anywhere near you. The deck protection mod is what I'm using instead of the general damage control system, because I have found in the past that my German battleships tend to catch fire quite a lot, and quite a lot easier than other battleships. So that's what I'm running with, and um, she behaves very much like the Bismarck in that regard. The last slot, which traditionally for me goes actually into torpedo protection, I actually had to put into the steering gear mod, because her rudder shift was so terrible that I had to put this module in just to get her down to the same, to the same levels as I have on the Bismarck, and I do need that sort that. Um, that form of, of maneuverability a little bit with her because again I am playing aggressive so I do need to maneuver I'm not just uh, staying behind angling in and using my main guns because I only have eight of them also the supplies standard battleship loadout crew rations for reload maintenance for hit points and uh, diesel for ship speed uh, really no point in going in going um, stealth on this thing and the commander is our Franz von Hipper, our legendary commander, moving on from the Bismarck. He still has the, the same he still has the same set. We've got the underwater protection. So if you haven't seen it on, on the Bismarck, he has the underwater protection. He actually does not have the torpedo alert because he gets the um, improved armament repair expert. And this is quite useful because your secondaries have are relatively poorly armored and relatively exposed. So when you're getting shot at by battleships, your secondaries tend to suffer very quickly, which makes this actually quite useful. The also again she has sonar and there's a there's a sonar skill we get to in a minute. Uh, other than that, the artillery maintenance, which means I'm not getting the high alert for damage control cooldown. I'm using six tens obviously because that's a really really useful skill, which also means I don't get the victorious charge. Which does mean that um, I'm not getting fire, fire supremacy for another precise aiming, but uh, rather get a survivalist here because I really do need um, to restore hit points at some point. The Reckon and Surveillance skill actually uh, improves the, the sonar duration and rapidly improves the cooldown time as well. This is quite useful. And the Marksman skill actually enhances the precise aiming sufficiently that you can get, I think, two salvos off easily. Which means the additional uh, charge is not quite coordinate as necessary. What I'm really looking forward to is the close combat expert, <coughs> because again she makes the secondaries secondaries dispersion even better, and the uh, armor piercing cap shell, which is 
again, improved over the regular one. So this is stuff that I'm really looking forward to, but we're not quite there yet. We'll get there. Um, currently, I'm running the I'm currently running the C1 Assault camo, and I have found that I get focused less in that thing, which which is kind of weird. But um, I used to, I used to go with the Red Alert or the Sea Storm. And for some reason, I just get focused a lot more in this than I get in the Seaborn Assault. That might be a coincidence, but um, who knows? Anyway, uh, so what is she like in the game? Well, let's play a couple of rounds and I'll show you. Okay, heaps of destroyers again. Uh, this has been a bit of a theme today. It's like I you can get three, four destroyers every single battle. We're bottom tier, Monte Yama, Izumo, and then Double Shima. And, well, at least it's two bot destroyers, so we don't have to worry about that too much. But, um, yeah, I've been <coughs> I've been getting destroyers quite a lot lately, and it is really irritating. This is, you can't, um, at this tier, at like tier 9 or 10, you, you can't really easily um, operate alone. You're going to need support. And we don't have any cruisers, as usual. So, uh, this was already happening with the Bismarck that more often than not I was actually chasing destroyers because either the cruiser players weren't there or they were doing other crap. So in this case, um, given that we have two bot destroyers and we have a Shima with us, I'm actually going to venture and we've got another... What battleships do we have? A Curry and a Monty. Okay. And they seem to be wanting to stay behind, so I'm going to follow up the Shima here. Uh, given that these two destroyers are in front of me, they're going to scout at least, so I can turn out and turn over. Where, where are you going? <laughs> okay, I'm detected. I am immediately targeted. I don't see anything, so it's probably a bot. Given that he switched target, yeah, that's a bot. There's the bot Shima. Uh, I've got nothing better to shoot at, so I might as well. I've got the armor piercing loaded, so it's not going to do a great amount of damage. But he's in secondary range. There we go, one pen. And the secondaries can pen him at this, at this range. So, I'm going to slow down here because I... Yeah, there we get some... There we get some opposition. There's the enemy Izumo. And uh, I don't want to run into a full defense of three battleships with destroyer support. So, do we get... Uh, oh, someone's pushing with us, okay. So I can tank for a while. See, is more showing my explosive at me. Oh, there come some Yama shells. Okay, bounce them all off. Um, okay, double fire, not having that. Okay, that's the Izumo firing high explosive at me. Uh, oh, he just took a beating. Okay. Is that a bot over there? Yes, that's a bot. The Izumo is giving me a nice broadside. So let's shred into her. And see if we can pull them around. So our. Well, there's no support follow-up. Yep, he's definitely shooting high explosive at me. At this range, you'd want to shoot armor piercing, because otherwise you're dead. Now you see we lost one of our secondaries, but the auto secondary is opening up now. Okay, so at this point, I'm going to run the hydro just to see if there's any torps inbound. And um, I think I've done enough tanking for now. Uh, Curry, your turn. You're top tier battleship, you go tank some. Because I'm down to 20,000 hit points and I've got a Shima chasing after me. Uh, the problem is, how am I going to disengage from here? Because now I am basically just going to have to go this way. Oh, Shima is out. So I've got the Hydra still running, so if she's firing torpedoes, I should see them. Um, the battleships are out of range. I just need to get the curry to. Come on, why are you. Why are you running away? You have to. I need you to tank for me, a little bit at least. I'm down to thirteen thousand hit points. Okay, slow down. Turn the ship around. Yep, there come the torps. Okay, now I might take one or two of those. Full on turn. That's one. That's two. Yeah, uh, seen that one coming. 
Okay, I'm gonna put her in reverse and see if I can get shot out at whatever that is back there. Because there are two Shimas guarding this flank. One or two, maybe two. And uh, that's a bit much for my taste. Because I can't even see the torpedoes coming and they're gonna see me coming from a mile away. So we can't push into this because of the amount of Shimas out here. I'm actually going to switch over to the high explosive because I don't think I'm going to get shots off at that battleship still. Um, and there he comes. Okay. She must not have smokes as far as I'm I'm concerned. So. Let's see if we can make his life unpleasant. I mean, we're dead, right? There's a Shima. I have no way of dodging this. I know that I'm dead. But uh, maybe I can get him still? No, I can't get him anymore. No way in hell I could I could dodge that. See, that's the problem when you are when you are alone and you have no no cruiser cover or anything. But um, let's let's follow. Let's see what the what the uh, the other ships are doing. They're sailing around in the center somewhere, doing God knows what. So yeah, if you get rushed by say. A Shima or a Fletcher, it would have been nice. You know, you, you're both two, you, you're all full health. It would have been nice if any one of you had done some tanking, you know, or tried to chase some destroyers or something, you know. Um, yeah. <laughs> you, you're not going to dodge torpedoes at, at this tier against uh, something like a Shimakaze. The these torpedoes are fast. They drop, they're going to drop you from close range. Um, the ships are just too sluggish to dodge. So you do need to kind of stick with your team for a little bit. I mean, we still won this, but you do need to, to stick with your team for a bit and um, make sure that you have some support, because if you're standing alone against the DD, you're not going to be in a good uh, in a good place. So what we did win this, and yeah, the, the destroyers are ruling the upper tiers at the moment, because I have not seen a single top tier cruiser today, and I've been playing a handful of battles. Let's do that again and see if we can uh, get a bit better luck. Okay, that's more bot heavy than I wanted, but look, there's a cruiser. I just said there was no cruisers and now we get cruisers galore. Okay, sure, <laughs> I'll take it. Okay, given the amount of bots we can and there are no destroyers around right now, we can actually take this more aggressively. But yes, uh, top tier, if you're high, uh, playing higher tier games, um, destroyers become an absolute nuisance when you're in a battleship. The battleships are, are less maneuverable than they are in lower tiers. The destroyers are better and they hit much harder. So um, you, if you're in a battleship, playing aggressively, like you have to in a German battleship to make them work, is, is really not something that's very easy. So let's have a quick look, what do you have? We have an Iowa and a Cleveland. So there are no torpedoes in this game, <laughs> at least not on the enemy side, uh, exact, except for the bots. So, um, we're going to push into this aggressively, but yeah, um, if, if, if you get an aggressive game, oh, Cleveland's pushing, I'm surprised, okay, let's see how that works for him, <coughs> excuse me, okay, almost in secondary range, Primary is almost reloaded. Yeah, that that Cleveland basically suicided. Uh, give me a nice broadside. There we go. One more salvo should do it. And yes, the bookie takes him out. Okay, that's one player down. Well, there's the other one. Time to get stuck in, I'd say. There's the Iowa. There's a North Cal as well. Oh, there's a Taco too. Target rich environment. Uh, no, Taka is moving out. Let's deal with the Iowa then. Before he mops up the Wichita over there. Okay, I spoke too soon. There are torpedoes. And it should run out, right? Yes, they do. Ha! All skill, no luck. I knew that would happen. Okay. 
Let's go after this Iowa. So you have to aim a bit higher with the secondaries, so you actually get the um, get the hits into the superstructure. Or, well, you actually have to hit, yes. But, um, oh, that's the North Carolina, but I want to get rid of the... Uh, I want to get focus, focus the Iowa down. Yes, you have to hit a little bit higher, or to aim a little bit higher. Because you see, when, when you hit the armor belt, you're not actually going to do much damage. Okay, the Iowa has noticed that I'm after him. So, let's close the distance as much as we can, keep the ship angled. Ideally, it would be outflanking him, but um, he needs to die. And quickly, because there are other ships around here. So at this distance, this is kind of an ideal distance for for uh, for the ship to, to operate in. Because the, the auto-secondaries can set him on fire. And the main guns will do nice full penetrations. Let's heal up a little bit. But now yeah, he's in he's in full full force on my on my uh, all my guns. There go the mains again, and that's that thing shredded. Okay, there's a Shokaku. Okay, uh, excuse me while I'm turning my my ship around. Uh, there's also a Takao. Okay, sorry Shokaku, you're gonna have to wait. Let's get every everything to fire. That's a nice citadel on the Takao. Is he turning? Okay. Now, oh, yeah, you'll get your turn, Mr. Shokaku. Okay. Where are you going? Come back here, you. Okay, ship turned around. Even the secondaries can sit at element this range. And we just need a good, nice broadside. And then we can finish this up. Yeah, I'm not gonna damage con this because there's no way you're gonna escape me, my friend. Okay, he's turning back in again. Let's aim further down. That's the auto secondaries firing, and that's it. And we've done 114,000 damage. Okay. Um. Well, we only shot at one bot. Uh, well, two bots really, but you know, she can. She can. Uh, um, she can stand her own in a close-range brawl against a Tier 9 American battleship without much problems. Um, her her auto-secondaries are going to fire on both sides. So even if you're not actually facing something, the secondaries on the other side are automatically going to start opening up. So if we look at the amount of damage we've done, um, we've done almost as much damage with the auto-secondaries as we have done with the with the, um, the 150mm secondaries. All in all, 26,000 damage with secondary guns alone. <laughs> uh, plus a decent amount of fire damage, which because the auto secondaries fire rapidly because of the secondary build. They fire far and they fire accurately. And uh, yeah, there's um, there's a lot of uh, a lot of fire coming down range from these things. Plus the primaries are hitting very very hard as well, and uh, having good pens, three citadels. I actually have, and I'm, I'm going to overlay uh, the screenshot, uh, sorry, I don't have a recording. I actually have my personal damage record in this ship uh, with, I think, about 147,000 damage done in the battle. <laughs> and while there were a lot of bots, there was also an Iowa that I was able to shred. So that was kind of a similar battle to this one. Um, so, yes, this is this is the Freddy, uh, the Friedrich der Große. She is, is she playing the same as the Bismarck? No. She is an evolution of the Bismarck. She has bigger guns. She has more precise secondaries, but she is also slower more sl and more sluggish uh, to work with. And the problem is the bi in the Bismarck, you get tier seven, eight, and maybe nine battles. In this thing, you get eight, nine, and 10 battles, which means they are a lot more strategic if you're bottom tier which means you cannot easily play aggressively when you're bottom tier because most of your team is going to be playing defensive 
or it's going to be it's going to be jockeying for positions and it's going to try to whittle down enemy ships if you expose yourself and just become well the closest target you get focused down in absolutely no time and while she is a sturdy ship if you get three four battleships fo focusing at, at you plus destroyers dropping you um, there is just really really not much going on what i'm missing at the moment in tier 10 battles is is decent uh, cruiser support so i haven't had a single game well i haven't seen many cruisers to begin with it's mostly just battleships and destroyers which means that the battleships have to hang back because you can't brawl destroyers in these things uh, not not at tier 9 and 10 and the, the cruiser support is just not really there I don't know why that is maybe people don't like playing high tier cruisers because of the amount of battleships that are tending tending to be in the game but um, I mean like you, you've seen the Cleveland right he was he was trying to go after after, after he was he was way over aggressive he was going r running right into the bots plus me he should have st he should have stood back uh, with the Iowa and, um, and and do fire support, especially against bots. You don't want to get close. There's no reason for you to get close. Just to set them on fire. So um, I don't know why there aren't many cruises, but it makes playing the ship harder, definitely harder than the Bismarck. So I have had enormously great battles where she has done ridiculous amounts of damage, but I've also had a lot of frustrating battles, like... Um, like like just in the first one against the Shima, where you know it's just not really very much you can do in the ship when you're on your own. You do need support, so you do need to when you're playing, pick a player that you stick with. You don't want to run off alone, which is really difficult if nobody wants to push. So sometimes I'm ignoring that and I'm just going for it. And um, if I can if I can outflank, she can she can do enormous amounts of damage but uh, it can also go sideways. So she is not an easy ship to play. If you're a high tier battleship player and um, you don't, you like to be more on the more on the rear side of things, she's probably not your ship to play. I would probably go more with the American, uh, with the American battleships. She is very sturdy though. And if you meet anything French or Japanese, you can make their life very, very unpleasant very, very quickly. And like you've seen, she can even hold her own against an Iowa. Uh, so, definitely a good ship. I'm enjoying her, and I'm going to keep playing her. But be aware that she's not as easy to play as, for example, the Bismarck. I think the Bismarck has has it easier, just because of the lower tier, and because of the less strategic uh, way things are played, and because of the prevalence of cruisers at these lower tiers uh, compared to compared to high tier games. So. That's the Freddy, Friedrich der Große, the hypothetical battleship that was meant to be part of the German Navy to challenge the British. That never came, never came to pass, but we still get to enjoy her in the game. That's it for today. Hope you all had fun, and I'll see you all next time. Bye.